Kelly Clarkson's Wrapped in Red came out in 2013, and it is easily one of the best Christmas albums of the 21st century. She brought her unique spin to standards like I'll Be Home for Christmas and Silent Night, but then it had some amazing original songs like Underneath the Tree and Wrapped in Red. Man, I loved Wrapped in Red. I actually thought this would be the year that Kelly would finally push Underneath the Tree to be as big as Mariah's All I Want for Christmas is You, because Underneath the Tree has been that song that keeps coming back every season and it lands on the charts every year, but it's just not there where Mariah's song is. So I thought maybe this would be the year that Kelly would really push that song, but no. Kelly has decided to do a new Christmas album called When Christmas Comes Around. So this is gonna be interesting because Christmas albums are a hard thing to tackle because you gotta do some standards and you have to bring some kind of unique spin to those standards but you don't want to change them too much that people are like, what the heck did you do to that song? So, but this is Kelly's second time around doing this. So I'm not sure what she's going to do here. So what I'm going to do, I haven't listened to this yet. I'm going to listen to each song and I'm going to give you my first reaction to each track. Okay. So we're going to start with the opening song, of course, called Merry Christmas Baby. All right. So I made some notes because I want to make sure I fit it all in as I listen to these songs for the first time. So big orchestra opening, which I love. Now this is not the Merry Christmas Baby that we know, that standard. This is an original song. The first verse makes it very clear that this is a single Kelly kind of giving it to her ex or maybe dismissing her ex. Very interesting approach to this to open up a Christmas album like this. I don't think this is going to be a song that people are playing <laughs> at family gatherings. I think a lot of people's ears would perk up being like, what are we listening to? Because it's, yeah, not necessarily very happy. But so very interesting opening to uh, Kelly's uh, Christmas album that we're going in this direction. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Of course, we all know this song. Uh, I'm someone who is fine with listening to the original because it brings back that sense of nostalgia when you're listening to it each year. So when an artist does a new version, I need them to bring something new to the table. Like whether it's the arrangement, whether it's their vocals, whether it's like the backing vocals, like there's gonna be something new here. Nothing here struck me as new. I mean, look, Kelly's vocals are outstanding, but listening to this, this doesn't strike me as like, oh, I need to add this version to my playlist. So I don't think I'll be listening to Kelly's version of this classic uh, going forward. Christmas isn't canceled, just you. Great title. So we're back to the scorned woman who has a message for her ex. It has kind of that 50s doo-wop feel to it. It's solid. But once again, there's a theme here. It's like, yeah, she's singing to her ex. It kind of reminds me of uh, Amy Grant's Christmas album from 2016, Tennessee Christmas, where she decided to do songs um, for people that are alone at Christmas. It was pretty freaking depressing. Amy Grant has two of my favorite Christmas albums, Home for Christmas and A Christmas to Remember. But yeah, that Tennessee Christmas album was pretty depressing because it was it was meant for people who were alone <laughs> at Christmas. And this is kind of the direction that I think Kelly is going. It's like a theme of like the singing to your ex at Christmas, which is a little bit odd. It's not very cheery. So this is a decent song, but once again, the theme here for a Christmas album is a little bit strange. We'll see where we go from here. Merry Christmas to the one I used to know. Beautiful vocals. I mean, it goes without saying Kelly's going to have beautiful vocals. She goes into her falsetto here. Sweet little melody. It actually reminded me of Piece by Piece or Because of You and that it has a really romantic arrangement and production, but then the lyrics are just really cutting to the person that she's singing about. And yeah, now I'm seeing why Kelly wanted to do a second Christmas album because this is very different from Wrapped in Red because once again, it's all from the focus of an ex singing to, uh, sorry, a woman singing to her ex. So this is a very different theme. I'm not sure if I'm loving this theme, but yeah, let's keep going. Rocking around the Christmas tree, I'll say the same thing that I said about it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Got to bring something new to the table. It wasn't really grabbing me. There was a little breakdown at the minute mark that really, really intrigued me. I'm not sure it's going to be enough to make me add this version to my Christmas playlist, but it did make my ears perk up. So yeah, not totally standard, but I'm not sure Kelly mixed it up enough to make me want to keep listening to this version. But yeah, she did something a little bit in the middle there, that little breakdown that intrigued me. Glow, full stop, praise baby Jesus. <laughs> I was already completely taken by this track when we hear Kelly's vocals. But then when Chris Stapleton comes into it, Stop, we're dead about it. I actually had like the stank face going on when I was listening to it. Easily the best track on this album so far. We're on track six at this point. Everybody should be listening to this track this holiday season. Yeah, Glow, complete standard on this album. Santa Baby, so the standard that we know. And of course it goes along with the narrative of a recently single woman because now she's able to flirt uh, with Santa. So I already have Naya Rivera's version of this from Glee. I actually have Calista Flockhart's version of this from Alan McBeal way back in the day. I really enjoyed that. And I have Michael Bublé's version 
because Michael changed up the lyrics, which I thought was really, really cool. So Kelly's vocals are, of course, outstanding here, but Christmas music is weird that, that I get attached to those versions that I've already heard. So yes, Kelly has the best vocals out of the three previous people I just mentioned, but I don't think Kelly did enough with this version that would make me replace any of those. So yeah, I don't think I'll be listening to Kelly's version of this much either. Santa Can't You Hear Me, so duet with Ariana Grande. I know it was a big hit when Kelly's album was released uh, a couple weeks ago because people wanted to hear these two amazing vocalists duet. And yeah, the vocals are incredible here. But I actually found I was straining to hear them. I, was like, I thought the arrangement was too loud, that like it was really competing with their vocals, that I was really struggling to, I want to hear these two amazing vocalists. I don't need to hear all this production. So yeah, I found it was a little bit strained trying to hear them properly. Decent song, didn't blow me away like Glow. But yeah, I mean, Ariana Kelly, nice to hear them together. Last Christmas, so here we go. So this is what I'm talking about. So it's still the melody that we know, but Kelly puts a little jazzy spin to it. So I really, really like this. I'll be adding this to my playlist. I think the only version I have of Last Christmas in my library is Human Nature, which is an acapella version. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely be adding Kelly's version to this because I really enjoyed it. She mixed it up a little bit to really bring a unique style to it. Chicken Bell Rock. I'm saying the same thing over and over again. Like I know I have Randy Travis's version of this, I have Amy Grant's version of this. Kelly sang Jingle Bell Rock. Didn't really excite me. It is what it is. She sang that song. If you want to hear Kelly sing Jingle Bell Rock exactly as it is, here you go. Blessed. So this is the scorn woman realizing her life is pretty good. And yeah, Kelly, your life is pretty good. And this is another song that is very specific. Like I'd be interested to hear if people really connect to the song. This doesn't really strike me as a Christmas song. They do have the bells in there on the production to kind of sell it as a Christmas song, but it's not really that Christmassy. Um, this would be a meh track on a normal Kelly album, but I don't know, maybe people will really connect to this. I didn't. Christmas Come Early. I quite like this track. The lyrics are obviously very timely. It almost would have been more appropriate for 2020 than 2021 because we are getting back to a little bit of normalcy. But yeah, we've all been through a very rough time. This is Kelly. I'm acknowledging it. Once again, it's going to be odd to play this at a family gathering, but I did quite like this song. But yeah, a really odd theme <laughs> that Kelly went with with this album. So that's it for the standard version of the album. I know she has three bonus tracks that are songs that we've heard in the past at Christmas Eve and her duet with uh, Brett Eldridge, but those 12 songs make up when Christmas comes around. So yeah, obviously Kelly was going for a theme here of a woman kind of sticking it to her ex over the holidays. I don't know. I'm going to go back and listen to Wrapped in Red a lot more than I listen to this album. There's probably only about three or four songs that I'm really going to keep from this album. And that's insane for me to say because Kelly Clarkson is one of my favorite artists and she usually makes pretty solid albums. But this seems like almost um, unnecessary for her to do. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I want to hear your thoughts on Kelly's When Christmas Comes Around. Will you be listening to this instead of the Wrapped in Red album? I want to hear it.